Um, well, Cookie, welcome. Hi, Paul. Um, this is Cookie Marenko from Blue Coast Records, and we are actually in your hotel room. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> um, tell Our me. Secrets. Yeah, okay. exactly. So tell me what you're doing. What are all these microphones, and what, what are we doing here? Uh, we're doing live recording. In the hotel in, room? In the hotel. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we brought a Pyramix system, and we're recording to Quad DSD, playing back on these lovely Sony speakers, uh, and recording. We brought our setup, a couple of mics, our cable, go right in, oh, Millennium preamps, and invited artists to come up and perform two or three songs with the uh, audiophile community sitting in the back. Wow. Yeah, there's a whole group of chairs back there, and then you play it back? Yeah. And it, it's fascinating, actually, to be able to show um, the music lovers what it's like, what we deal with. So, for instance, having these mics and these mics, and when the singer is here and mm -hmm. the guitarist is here, if you take out that ma microphone, right. you still hear the singer in these mics. Uh -huh. Just like you still hear the guitar coming up into the vocal mics. And when that happens, it would have to, on the speakers, it would have to change the depth. Exactly. The yeah. So what happens, in, for instance, you might get uh, more of the vocalists over there coming through uh, uh, this speaker because of the position of these microphones. So as you mix, which means combining the multi-track mm -hmm. into stereo, left and right, you would bring this microphone vocal mic may be more up in the center and you can hear the vocal slowly moving across the image as you bring it up wow that would be, i'm gonna to have to sit for one of these that that would be just really fascinating one thing i'm curious about though the hotel room is that there's no sound conditioning of any kind in here it's just a hotel room so how do you get away with that because you have a studio yeah um every room presents a challenge Windows present a challenge. Um, this room comes to a, a point in the back, and we actually chose this direction specifically for that. And you can see up in the middle of the room, there's a... A bass trap. Right. It does. <laughs> That's what happened. Built-in bass trap. Even leaving that, you know, where the door is to the other yeah. bedroom suite, the um, that becomes a bass trap for us. So actually, the That's sound in here is good. good. Yeah sound absorbers and the chairs uh, create nice diffusion mm -hmm. and even that lamp mm -hmm. that's why that chair is positioned right underneath one so people don't hit their head <laughs> but also so it it disperses the sound in a way that's more pleasing well, and it doesn't sound bad I, it's mm -hmm. you know our ears block out all of the room echoes so we don't pay attention to it but when you play it back through a pair of speakers we tend not to do that anymore and so it'd be interesting to hear how that sounds. So one of the things I wanted to ask you about was DirectStream. Okay. Um, tell me about your experience with DirectStream. Well, it's uh, it's a, a DSD DAC, <laughs> and it's great. What can I? I, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, how, we, do you use it at home or in the I studio, use, or what do you? I use it for my personal listening. Uh -huh. But. Um, Next week we're going to move it downstairs where I have another listening room for my mastering and playback system and um, uh, using it with our Sony AR1 speakers because mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a great opportunity to be able to play back music through those speakers that we don't often get a chance to do. We, we talked to Steve Hoffman um, yesterday and one of the things he said was how astounded he was at the lack of quality in recording studios um, of the equipment. Yeah. He said you'd be horrified at most of it, but I don't think yours is that way. Now, yeah. I don't know, I haven't been there, so talk to me, what, what's, what kind of equipment do you have? Well, it, it's um, the lower two levels of my home, actually, and uh, it's 2,200 uh, square feet that we've divided up um, into the control room, mm -hmm. which is on one level, and several performing areas. It's actually not the greatest room to record in. It's carpet, it's, it's more like a home environment. So when we're playing back and mixing, I'm not particularly fond of the sound. Okay. So I, I tend to add uh, 
anywhere from three to five different reverbs to create an environment. Mm -hmm. But as far as capturing the sound itself, uh, the equipment we use is pretty high end. And listening back, because Steve's right, most um, professional studios will listen back on, uh, you know, more consumer level, like mm -hmm. NS10s. The Yamaha NS10s have been implanted in the studios for for about 30 years now, I think. I have three pair. And part of that's because when you're going from studio to studio, you are looking for a consistency in playback. Sure. But uh, to take into account that, you know, the amplifier changes the sound, the cabling changes the sound, the room changes the sound, uh, it's very difficult to go from studio to studio to mix. Sure. But it's fascinating to me to think that, well, I have never seen an audiophile or anybody with a home system that has a pair of NS10s that they're using for playback, and yet the studios have these consistent, these strange, I, I've seen Gentle X, I've seen 1940s, um, Altex, and it just, and I think what, at least my impression is that engineers and, and mastering people kind of develop a, a, a way to sort of work around all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Does that seem right? Yeah. Um, in, the, in our control room, we have five sets of speakers. Mm -hmm. So we have a, the little uh, Oratones. I don't know that anyone will remember those, but at the time they were about $60 Okay. Each. We power them with a Macintosh, but <laughs> so they sound pretty good. Yeah. But um, when you're dealing with um, the mainstream audience, they're not always privileged enough to have more than you know, fifty dollars at a speaker, so we have to make sure it plays back well mm. for everyone. So it's it's not a good idea to optimize for one set of speakers, at least in my opinion. So we would move from the Oratones up to the NS10s. I don't use the NS10s for my standard speakers anymore. I have um, NHT M60s. I don't believe they're in production, but uh, they've replaced my NS10 fascination. And then we also have on the higher end the Jean Marie Renault Offrance and some Myers in the back and some Tannoys. But when it's all said and done, I take the final, what I think is the final mix, and I'll go to a completely different room where I have the AR1 Sony speakers set up mm -hmm. and a couch in the back, and I just sit and listen. That's where we're gonna put your the DS track. track. Nice. Yeah. And just play it back and just get away from the control room and everything that's in there to get in my way and just listen. As I would do at home myself. Exactly. Nice. So nice. at the end of the day, we're going to listen to that last mix on, you know, something See how like it works on a stereo system. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much for spending a few minutes, and I'll let you get back to your recording. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Good to see you. Okay. Got to get hugs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All righty. Thank you. <laughs>